Welcome back to the ATG, the most above typical community on the internet. I'm your newly discovered commentary channel, Mikatsky. If you've ever wondered what it would be like to live in an outback steakhouse, boy, do I have the perfect episode of Monster House for you. It's a monster house. It's a monster house. Monster. monster House, the home improvement show that's also a timed competition. Homeowners seeking a makeover will pick a theme. Our host Steve, along with the design crew, will design some over-the-top projects based around that theme. Then the design crew will be yeeted and a totally separate group of contractors will be called in to build these projects. Here's the kicker, they will only have five days to complete all of the construction. If they do it, they win a set of tools. And if they don't, then they walk away with nothing. Why only give them five days to work on such an intense project? Because fuck the homeowners, that's why. And guess what? They don't finish on time in this episode. What's gonna happen? This time, the homeowners are two divorced dads that bought a home together and are not in a gay relationship with each other. The only reason I'm calling attention to that is because this guy is very passionate about letting you know that he is not gay. Two guys sharing a house doesn't mean his and his towels. You know, I have a girlfriend. You know, her name's Lisa Cole. He even brought his beard, I mean girlfriend, along to prove it to you. I am here to verify that yes, Ron Goldberg here is heterosexual. <laughs> We're just two guys. That was very heterosexual. As far as a kiss from a man to a woman goes, that was very natural and hetero as fuck. I know I'm cracking a few gay jokes here, but I hope you can tell that I'm just trying to be goofy about it. I am in no way trying to be hateful or bigoted about this at all, and no one in my audience should be either. In fact, this is a great opportunity for me to draw a line in the sand and let you know where I stand with LGBT. I stand with my LGBT kings, queens, non-binaries, and anyone else standing underneath that umbrella. I think it sucks that the world sucks and it won't let LGBT people just live their lives with peace and dignity and respect as they deserve. I cannot fathom how in the 21st century, in the year 2024, that this is still even a topic of discussion. Kind of goes to show you how moronic and caveman-like a large amount of the population is still. We're not as evolved as we think we are. I know that things get tough sometimes and you don't entirely feel safe in your existence because the world doesn't make you feel safe in your existence, especially if you're trans right now. There's so much violent rhetoric against trans people right now, and that's super unfortunate. But just remember, you are way stronger than any bigoted person in this world could ever hope to be. They are living a life filled with lies and hatred, and you are living a life filled with your truth and love. And that is all that matters at the end of the day. So keep your head up because the world is so much better with you in it. With that being said, this guy is not gay, okay? He is not gay, so cut it out. What's the theme that they picked? They've asked Steve to turn their home into the wild, wild west. Old West. I know what you're thinking. I can feel where your mind is going. And no, we can't make Brokeback Mountain references either. I wish I knew how to quit you. Simply because it didn't exist yet. That movie doesn't come out for another two years at the time that this episode aired. So get that connection out of your head, okay? Jeez, you guys are so immature. Inappropriate. I am super excited to see what projects they're going to build with an old western theme. And it better be some good stuff because we got the production set designer from Shanghai Noon. Peter Hampton, production designer of the Jackie Chan flick, Shanghai Noon. Wow. This wall right here is basically just this shoddy wall as they put together just to create a bedroom for the, one of the dads. To give themselves an additional room, they built a false wall right in the middle of the living room. We're gonna tear this wall down and turn the entire living room into a saloon, complete with saloon doors, a stage, a wagon wheel poker table, and they're also gonna take the ceiling out. The ceiling will be removed to create a balcony and the illusion of a second story. You know, I'm, I'm not an expert, but the ceiling feels like it's kind of important, just like 
structurally speaking, but I mean, what do I know? I'm not Steve. As long as the house is still technically standing at the end, I don't think that the homeowners can sue them. But now that that room is gone, where's the second dad gonna sleep? Outside, of course. Sorta. Outside, the patio will be enclosed to become a cowboy bunkhouse, complete with a rustic bed and old-fashioned bathtub. You know what? This build is actually kind of cool. Like, this feels like a legitimate remodel. I mean, they're adding a whole extension to the house. Finally, an episode where there feels like there's a cohesive theme and it's not just like a set of random projects. This feels targeted. This feels focused. Can't say the same for the build crew though. Everyone means well, there's no Kent this time around, but man, they are gonna struggle. Well, one of them is at least. This week up to the plate is Master Contractor Jack. He's kind of like the main character that doesn't want to be the leader, but has the responsibility thrust upon him anyways, and then he's like, I never asked for this but I never had a choice. Look at the editing. They're already propping my boy up to be a leader. Then there's Eric, and he gives me Jesse from the first Fast and the Furious vibes. I'm so sorry. I'm so scared right now. We got Ray, and uh, trigger warning, Ray is gonna remind you of every horrific manager that you ever had to deal with. He's fine, he's a good dude, but he's just, he's just a curmudgeon. You know, that's the only word I can think of to describe Ray. He's just, he's just a curmudgeon. There's Rusty, who's like the gentle OG on set that no one wants to disappoint because he's filled with so much wisdom and kindness and he's like kind of mysterious. You don't know where he came from. He's, you just know he's just experienced a lot. And then finally, Justin, who, if you couldn't tell by his attire already, just shouldn't be here. He's kind of the Kent for this week, but he's not malicious or mean. He's not a bad guy at all. He's a sweetheart, he's funny, he's harmless, but he just, he just shouldn't be here. And you'll see why as the episode goes on. Day one starts out great as it usually does. Steve runs them through the projects and they have that starry eyed look in their eyes that says, what the fuck did I sign up for? It was at this moment that he knew he f and then they start tearing stuff down. Dude, I, I love tearing stuff down. Tearing stuff down is so fun. It's the, it's the building it back up that's, that's troublesome. Rusty starts to tear down the ceiling, which... Again, guys, do we, do we want to have a little powwow? Do we want to talk about this? I just... I, I don't know. The ceiling just... It doesn't feel like an optional feature, but whatever. The ceiling is gone. It's gone. And this is where Ray's curmudgeon personality starts to surface. I enjoy a clean, safe environment to work in. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get any of my guys hurt. So you keep a clean area to work in, everybody's safe, and the job is done. Okay, so he's big on safety guidelines. I guess we can't really hate on that. I mean, someone has to be there to make sure all the rules are being followed. But did you catch what he said? He just referred to this team as his guys. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get any of my guys hurt. These four random strangers that he's been paired up with for this one job, and he's already referring to them as my guys. All right, look here, Ray. I get it. You're a by the book kind of fella, but don't call me your guy. It just, it feels condescending for some reason. I'm not your guy, buddy. Catching up with Jack, he's cutting a hole in the wall that will be the door that will connect to the new room that they're building. See, Jack is the kind of guy that you want to hire because he's all business, he gets shit done, and he seems to be very, very knowledgeable about most everything it takes to be a contractor. I mean, this guy has earned the title Master Contractor. Keep that in mind for later. After they get done cutting the hole, they find a mysterious pipe and they can't figure out what it could be. As a precaution, they shut off everything in the house, electric, water, but the gas line seems to give them some trouble. Justin and Ray head off to kill the gas. I had to turn the shit off. Like, hey, look at this. Read the directions, I guess. Mm-hmm, yeah. When someone is working on the gas line to my house, 
The last thing that I want to hear is, guess I should read the instructions in a very unsure tone of voice. You'll notice manager Ray just kind of hovering over Justin. I get the feeling that hovering is the job that Ray is best at when he's working with his guys. But in this case, the hovering may have been a godsend because this is our first glimpse that Justin has absolutely no f***ing idea what he's doing. But after all of this, turns out it was neither the electric, gas, or water. It was the cable. They cut their cable line. Are you kidding me? What kind of wire is that? Cable. This cable. Welcome to your new home. Oh, sick! You like it? Well, here's the saloon. We cut your cable. If you follow me to the back, there's a brand new bedroom. What was that? We built you a new room. Before that. We built you a saloon. After that. We cut your cable. Why? It was, uh, in the way. But in our defense, we thought it was the gas line, so. Why didn't you guys fix it? Why didn't you guys fix it? Shut up. Call your cable company or your god. It's their problem now. Monster House, let's roll out. What the heck? Honey? What? Will you come kiss me in front of this camera? Back in the living room, now they're cutting the support strut to the ceiling as well. The joists are cut out to make room for the second story balcony. You know what? I don't think I need to be an expert. I think I'm gonna just listen to my gut here. Uh, guys, this looks and feels wrong. The reason they're doing all this is to create a false second story for the saloon, and I, I guess that that's gonna act as the new support for the house also? Remember when we used to just add fun things to a house and not completely change its architecture? How much is this gonna cost to reverse if they don't like it? Hey, thanks for coming by. <laughs> Whoa, what in the f yeah, it's, uh, it's Old West themed. We were on this show. It's, it's a whole thing. Where is your ceiling? They took it. Wh where's the support strut? They took it. Look, man, uh, we can fix this, but at this point, it might be cheaper to just tear the house down and just start over. <sighs> really? Unfortunately. <sighs> Honey? What? Will you come kiss me in front of this contractor? Jack is busy outside putting up the new framing for the room that they're building. But this is a heavy duty project that's going to require a heavy duty tool. He needs a tool called a ram set. A ram set is a, a, a tool that shoots a pin through the wood and into the concrete to, uh, to secure that bottom plate. So this tool that Jack needs to use is essentially how a gun functions, except instead of bullets, this thing shoots nails into concrete. Sounds fun, right? Not on Ray's watch. Jack wants to use the ram set. My concern being a general contractor, I have to look out for the entire crew. Is Jack actually licensed and certified to use this? Am I certified to yeah. use it? That's a new one on me. I never heard you had to be certified to use a ram set. Ah, oh, God, this guy is so lame, dude. Just let me use the shooty shooty boomstick. Uh, yeah, you do, being a, a powder actuated fastener, you do. I have a hard time with Ray because to be fair, he's just trying to make sure that the rules are being followed. But there's a time to follow rules and there's a time to read the room. Remember, Jack, is a master contractor. He's He's been around the block. I mean, just because you used it for it doesn't mean you know how to use it. Um, no, I think that's exactly what that means, Ray. If he's used it before and he's still alive and without injury, then I'm pretty sure he figured out how to use it properly. Ray, weren't you just having trouble shutting off a gas valve a few minutes ago? You couldn't figure out how to turn a nozzle and you're giving this guy shit for using a construction tool? Had to be checked out on it. Oh, well, You then. can't just buy it off the shelf and use it. Ray just can't help himself. I mean, he's just trying to look out for his guys only they're not his guys and he's not the supervisor on this job and this is not his job site he's just a builder like the rest of them and you can see how annoyed everyone is with him even steve hey i'm, I'm asking i've been doing this stuff for 25 years we just grab one and go man well that, a lot of things happen like that though see so i can't uh-huh 
check off on that. Sign off on what? You are not in charge here, dude. What are you gonna do? Send Jack off to HR? You know what, let's just skip ahead and let me just show you how easy it is to use this tool and how dumb Ray is for throwing this tantrum. Done. Wow, that was tough, wasn't it? <laughs> That's it. That was it, basically a hammer and a nail. <laughs> Got certified for that. There you go. <laughs> After being made fun of for a little bit, I think Ray realized that I should probably shut the fuck up. And he eases up for the rest of the episode. Let's just be glad that Ray became a contractor and not a cop. Can you imagine the power trip he'd be on then? I'm a team player. We're all going along. I have to work with my guys. They're, they're not your guys. Please stop calling them your guys. I, I swear to God, if you call them your guys one more time, I'm going to invent a time machine. And I'm going to go back to this day. And I'm going to sh** in your coffee. Yeah, Ooh. then I'm going to on these walls, Ray. Ooh. Hey. Day one ends, and honestly, they got quite a bit done. They're off to a good start. How could this possibly go wrong? On day two, they start construction on the living room projects. Steve and Jack pair up to build the wooden stage. And this is where it slowly starts to become apparent that Justin may not be as qualified as these guys thought. Right here. So right now we're just building our bottom frame, our what top frame. Up? And then you oh. got, and then we're doing a seven inch stud in the middle of it to keep you all your support to make your box. That's right, brother. That's, that's, all right. All, that's, all, that's all I got. Justin's like, oh, what? Fractions? I thought we were just building stuff. I didn't know I had to be all fancy and no f fractions and stuff. Ray and Eric team up to work on the doors, but they can't continue until electrician Justin runs some wiring through the door frame. This is aggravating, man. He's gonna run a cable before we can finish what we're doing above. Aw oh, man, another task already? What the heck? Why is there so many tasks? Day two is another day of pretty decent progress, but by the end of the day, Justin is still trying to reroute this wire through the door frame. All he had to do was run the cable above and through the door frame. It's not like he had to phase it through a solid object. Everything is exposed and reachable. He just had to run it along a track essentially and he couldn't figure it out for a whole day. It's nighttime now. This isn't easy in a cycle. I mean, it's metal and you gotta pull it through some wood holes, holes in wood. Remember, Justin is the electrician. This is supposed to be his area of expertise, allegedly. The guys are starting to realize by the end of day two that time isn't the only obstacle that's gonna be standing between them and victory. <laughs> Man, either you're an electrician or you're not. 20 or 30 minutes after lunch, I was hoping to have that door framed in. Before day three begins, we check in with the homeowners, and these check-in segments always piss me off. It's a hundred times more than what I expected. I didn't expect pallets of stuff to be showing up on the front lawn. A whole dumpster, I had no idea. Not, not even any clue. Every single episode, the homeowners say this shit, and I just want to know what do the producers actually tell them beforehand? Because they're not going door to door like Jehovah's Witnesses and asking people to remodel their homes on the spot. This takes planning. There's meetings. There's conversations. There's likely paperwork that needs to be signed. So like, what, what do you like? What are you expecting to happen? I don't know why. It just, it just makes me irrationally angry. Every time they cut away and the homeowner's like, What? They're remodeling my house on this show about remodeling? Well, who could have seen that coming? I, I certainly didn't. Day three starts with Jack venting about how he feels about his team. And our most experienced builder is beginning to wonder if these cowpokes belong on the ranch. Um, I thought that we'd have seasoned construction people out here. Justin would definitely be fired. He'd be the first one to get fired. Dude didn't even know how to use a saw, man. That is a pretty wild way to use a saw. It does make you wonder about how the producers vet these guys. Like, do they make them prove their skills or do they just kind of take them at their word for it? Um, yeah, we need an electrician? That would be me. You're an electrician? Yes. Are you sure? Yep. Are you double, triple dog sure? Yep. Okay, you're in. 
This will give me easier access to the wire. Yeah, when you slam a hole into a wall with a hammer, it, it certainly will give you easier access to the wire. You got that right, bud. Every time they cut to Justin working, I don't know if I should be worried or really worried. Like, I know I need to be worried. I just, I just don't know how much. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be taking a crowbar to the studs inside the wall. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to leave those alone. Jack notices that Justin is cutting into a load-bearing beam. What's that beam in there? I don't know. I don't know if on the house. Oh, it's the support strut for the entire wall. Yeah, you're definitely supposed to leave those alone. This is a big enough f up that Steve needs to call a team huddle. There are some current concerns in regards to uh, the electrical situation. Okay. Well, Justin, let's start with you then. How where are you at and how are you feeling? They asked Justin how it's going and he can't seem to give them a straight answer. In fact, he can't seem to give them an answer at all. It's a lot of good thing to ask me right now. Okay. Where you at? Where you at right now, man? I feel bad because once again, I am sensing some neurodivergence in my man's over here and I just think he's overstimulated, overwhelmed, and he's just kind of shutting down. I really do think that he means well and he wants to do a good job, but he's just way out of his element on this job and he just, he just shouldn't be here. You can see the fear in Steve because he just doesn't know how to handle this. With Kent, it was easy because Kent was an asshole, so Steve didn't care about hurting his feelings, but with Justin, you can tell... He's trying to be gentle, but also scared out of his mind. Is that a load-bearing beam? Do you know? Yes. Of course, you know, if that was a load-bearing beam, we'll know in about 15 minutes when that wall comes down. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's the I mean, I don't know. I, don't know. I doubt it. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> please, please don't break the house. <laughs> this is my career. <laughs> oh, please be careful. <laughs> There's a lot of electrical work to be done, but right now Justin is stuck on one particular light switch. And I'm gonna spoil something for you. He's gonna be stuck on this light switch for the remainder of the episode. This light switch is the dead end for Justin. He will not progress past this. This light switch is his boss battle. This light is his fight with Margit in Elden Ring for the very first time. This light switch is his RC copter mission from Vice City. This light switch is his train mission from San Andreas. Everyone else seems to be coasting through their projects, but there are certain things that just can't get done until Justin finishes his electrical work. You can tell he feels bad for slowing the team down. I'm trying not to look stupid if you're trying to do this <laughs> And he offers to stay late into the night to try and figure out the issue. And unlike Kent, Justin actually keeps his promise. Say what you will about the man, but he's not a quitter. Unfortunately, when they come back on the morning of day four, little to no progress seems to have been made. Last night, Justin stayed past midnight, but this morning finds him staring at the same hole in the wall. The team is understandably confused about why Justin can't seem to figure out what seems to be a pretty easy job for an electrician. Everyone is starting to doubt whether Justin is an electrician at all. Here it is the next day, still standing in that corner, not getting nothing done. I'm, I'm really beginning to wonder what the experience or, or even if there is any experience in that. They decide to call another huddle to talk about it, but really all this huddle is doing is wasting time. Unfortunately, they really don't have any choice here but just to trust him to get his work done and to just forge ahead. And Steve decides this will be the perfect time to make things even worse. I'm looking at this wall when it opened up because I want to be able to sit at the table on the other side and see the show in here. Go in there and make it happen. Nice, Steve. It took this guy three days to get to even this point. And now you're like, everything you've done so far? move it over there which again shouldn't be that big of a deal but for our bumbling electrician that means moving the switch he's just spent two days installing how's it going here justin you look like you get a little frustrated with this thing the rest of day four again is pretty productive for everybody except for justin who's having an existential crisis about having to move this switch now 
working different jobs in the past couple of years, I mean, they had nothing to do with electrical wiring. And now I'm just having to slowly get into it and get re, you know, reintroduced back into it. And it's like riding a bike, once you fall off, you know, you gotta, or once you quit riding a bike, it's like, get back on, you know, um, but it's gonna take a while, you're gonna, you know, swerve and everything like that, you know, you might fall down and once or twice, just get back up and keep going. If we're not gonna be done, it's supposed to be my fault, and I realize this. And Steve is doing his absolute best to keep Justin happy and productive. Justin, just shake it off. Just shake it off. Just, just shake for a second. Just shake it off for a minute. I'm not shaking, that's shrugging. I'm really proud of Steve about how he's handling himself in this episode. Throughout this series, he really grows to be a people person, and you can see how he learns to work with different types of personalities. Like, I know we goof on Steve, but he truly is the best host for this show. He sincerely is very fun to watch. Day 5 starts with a panic as the team realizes just how far they are, even without Justin's slowdowns. And Rusty isn't mad, he's just disappointed. Rusty's taking this job real personal. You know, this was, uh, this was a real challenge for him, and I think he's extremely disappointed that the guys didn't stay last night and work. That bailed on me. I'm two days behind. And you, you know you're, uh, you know I'm right, right there. Man, why'd you guys have to go and upset Rusty? Not Rusty. But the weakest link simply cannot be ignored any longer. And so Steve decides that it's time to take Justin out to pasture. He's being fired. They're not going to kill him. That would be insane. All right, I'll be honest with you about it. This is like overwhelming me. I'm not prepared for this, you know? I mean, I've done this before. It's been a long time. And when we went and did do it, I wasn't very good at it. You can bow out right now, and it'll be fine. I'm telling you this man to man right now. I cannot believe this is happening to me. So there it is. Justin lied about his abilities. Who, who saw that one coming? Who would have thought that this guy was, in fact, not an electrician? And so, uh, Justin kind of, he just leaves. He, he's just like, sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I really do feel bad for the guy, man. He's a, he's a sweet guy. And I'm not a doctor, but it just, it feels like he's dealing with some undiagnosed issues. And I can only hope he eventually got it figured out in life. And I just, I hope he's in a better place wherever he may be today. You meant well, Justin. It's just too bad that you're going to be the sole reason that this team f***ing loses. Steve breaks the news to the rest of the team, and they take it about as well as you could have expected. We've been one team member short since well, day one. He was honest with me about the fact that he does not have experience as an electrician, and that he falsified on his, his uh, application. I feel betrayed that he lied. To lie is a whole different thing. To lie is, uh, I feel disrespected. Shut up, Ray. No one asked you except for the cameraman that walked up to you and asked you. With Justin gone, the team actually seems to pick up the pace. The mood has changed and these guys are kicking it into high gear. Heads up, coming down. Look at Ray, look at Ray, look at him, look at him. He wants to call a violation so bad. But at this point, Ray has learned to read the room. He's let his guys grow up and leave his made-up managerial nest. Steve decides to fill in the missing gap in this team by calling in a favor. It's Danny f***ing Snell from the race car house. Master electrician Danny is on the scene, baby, and judging by his sunglasses, his work is gonna be as cool as he is. Or hot, Elec electricity's hot. With Danny on the scene, the team is feeling a newfound confidence. Danny's even giving Jack a run for his money by competing for the leadership role. Ah! Too quiet in there, let's get going! Come on, guys! Time's running out! Danny is a monster house veteran and he's letting these guys know it. But even with the new energy that Danny pumped into this team, Unfortunately, it's too little too late. They simply lost too much time with Justin, and now it is mathematically impossible for them to win. It's a heroic effort, but the clock hasn't stopped ticking. 
All right, guys, one hour. We still got so much to do, you know? We're not gonna make it, but we're giving it best shot. But these boys are not quitters, and they all have a heart of gold. Despite knowing that they're not going to win, they continue to work at 100% capacity to the bitter end. Three, two, one. All right, put your tools down. Um, materials down. Everybody come on down. Build week's over. I cannot imagine the feeling of doing grueling manual labor for 12 plus hours, five days in a row, just to come a few hours short of the finish line. It's got to, ugh, that, that has got to sting. So what happens now? Do we just send these guys home and give the homeowner the house in as is condition? Of course not. That would be f***ing insane. Can you imagine though? Welcome to your new home. Uh, oh. You like it? It doesn't look finished? It's not. Unfortunately, the builders did not finish on time, so... Oh. Are you gonna finish it? I don't know if you have cotton in your ears. The builders did not finish on time. This is your house now. Monster house. Let's roll out. Oh. Honey? What? Will you come kiss me in this unfinished living room? Because of the weird circumstances of somebody lying about their abilities to get onto the show and then wasting everyone's time and then leaving and then having to be replaced by someone else to finish their job, the producers decide to have a heart and give the boys an additional nine hours to finish the job. We're gonna give you the option of uh, making up those man hours tomorrow. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm not a quitter. Can't, I can't leave this house like this. I, I, I never left a job like this at all. Life. Sure as hell I'm gonna start now. Which, yeah, you know, that, that makes sense and it seems fair, but it, it just kind of takes the drama out of it, doesn't it? Like, is anyone actually gonna lose? I don't think so, because that would be such a dick move to make people go through manual labor for five days straight for them to not finish, and then you're like, well, guess you lost. Now get off the set, you're trespassing. I feel like if there were any episodes where they really did not finish on time, I, I just feel like they wouldn't air those episodes. But I would love to see one. What do you think is worse? Getting a completed monster house or getting a half completed monster house? Let me know in the comments. I personally think it's worse to get a completed monster house because if you get it half complete, then there's time to turn it all around. I feel like that would be cheaper to like reverse and fix. We're not going to talk about the extra day they got because it's mostly just a montage of them finishing the work. I mean, obviously with the extra time, they got everything done. They were really close to finishing as is. The interior decorators show up to put on the finishing touches and now it is time for the big reveal. It's completely up and down emotions. You have excitement, nervousness, anticipation. Nervous it's nervousness. It's a new word. We're ready. Are you? That is a very heterosexual outfit. We have an old West house now. We gotta look the part. And the show makes it clear just one last time that this man's girlfriend is in fact on set and is in fact accompanying him. It's time for the entire extended family to rope in a monster. Ron's girlfriend Lisa and her daughter come along for the ride. The reveal is really fun this time because look at the end result. This is the craziest episode of Monster House yet. They completely transformed this house. It doesn't look anything like from where we started. Oh, no this way. is amazing. Oh. Out back, the builders watch on closed circuit TV. This feels like an actual remodel. And even though everything is over the top, all of it feels very unified and functional. It's not just 
random projects strewn about the house. Editor Mickey here. Um, I'm not sure what happened between the last day and the reveal, but for some reason Ray is on crutches now. They don't explain that or address that. I don't know if Jack beat the shit out of him off camera, but uh, yeah, something happened and, and Ray is on crutches now for some reason, so... Forgot to add that in the video, which is ironically hysterical because this man spent the entire episode on a tirade about safety regulations. I guess if he was paying more attention to what he was doing instead of being worried about his guys, things might have turned out differently. These are your builders. You guys. Oh, you guys. You guys were awesome. Oh. Have at it. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing a good job. Good work this week, man. Good work. I actually really like the way this one turned out. Would you live here? Would you buy this house? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to become a member of the ATG, all you got to do is hit subscribe to secure your lifetime membership to the most above typical community on the internet. I mentioned two people throughout this episode. Kent and Danny. And if you haven't seen my content before and you were confused about that and want to know what I was talking about, click this video to see Kent's episode and click this video to see Danny's episode. And then check out the other content on my channel. This is a certified silly goose zone. We have a lot of fun here. Hit the bell to stay notified. I'll see you next time. I'm sorry you had to see that. I gotta get the Foley. What do you want from me?